Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis here, RK3 Designs, and today we're gonna take wood, make it look like stone, and we're gonna find the perfect recipe to complement fixtures that are dark brushed copper, floors that have shades of dark brown, cabinets or turquoise, my favorite, with brushed copper pulls, and she wants a little bling. So we have one side of this sample board with a rock edge, we have the other side with a smooth edge. These are countertops that we teach the students in our classes how to build. So we're gonna do the rock edge. We're gonna kind of pre-fog it to give it some character and give it some depth. So I'm coming in with a dark bron uh, brown and I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit of undertones. Now this is gonna be a dark finished countertop. So it's gonna pick up a little bit of these colors. Now, even though we have a, a smooth edge here on this end, we're gonna do the same thing. That was uh, an espresso. Now we're gonna come in and add a dark walnut. So this dark walnut is just gonna give one more layer of contrast, even though it's gonna be a very, very light contrast. So I know that her cabinets are turquoise with uh, copper. So that tells me I'm gonna be adding a tiny bit of that accent, not a lot, just a little bit. So every so often, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of deep mint. And I'm gonna kinda get a little bit of that color. And if nothing else, this is just gonna kinda help me guide when I start pouring where I may want some of that turquoise. So this is really more for me than what the eye is actually gonna see once I pour. We're gonna let this dry, mix up some epoxy, and get started. So when you're mixing up the product and you uh, maybe bring your paddle a little bit above the surface, that will entrain just a little bit more air but that's okay because we're gonna torch all those bubbles out here in just a minute. So when I'm mixing the mica powders, I'll make a slurry out of alcohol first before I pour the epoxy into the cup. Makes it so much easier to mix. This is dark bronze. That was regular bronze. So I'm gonna have both metallics and non-metallic colors. I want that contrast between a uh, really metallic and a more of a flat color. One of my very, very favorite browns in the world is the Illumilite uh, Dark Brown Opaque Dye. I love this color, but I'm actually gonna go bring it down one more notch. And I got this little hint from uh, my friend Stacy with Artisan Design Concepts. She added one little drop of black to her dark brown dye. And it's just gonna really make a super rich, rich, dark, dark brown, which is what I'm going for. So guys, if you're looking for this recipe, I have all of these colors and all of this, um, these supplies on my website, RK3 Designs just check out the supply page. This is a really pretty color. I love Color Passion. Um, it's, it's a great gel type color and it's gonna give me a little different brown look. It's gonna be some great contrast to the dark opaque dye. So the customer wants a little bling action and this is a really cool product. It's by Just Resin. It's a very, very, very fine glitter. And I'm really gonna load that up. Beautiful. So Artists Till Death is the ones that turned me on to the Just Resin and the Color Passion products. So the next accent color that I'm gonna use is a copper. Now this just isn't any copper. This copper has a tendency to want to float on the top of your surface. 
And that's why I'm using this copper today as opposed to maybe a regular mica powder copper. This copper is an amazing color. It's really going to give me a high, high metallic accent. So all I'm going to start doing is laying down colors. I'm going to start off with my really dark brown, which is the uh, opaque dye mixed with a little bit of black. Now this is just kind of laying, help me lay down my pattern a little bit. I'm going to save some in the cup, my dark bronze. And if you'll notice some spots I'm, I'm skipping completely. And then this is the regular bronze. And all we're trying to do right now is kind of spread out the colors. I'm not even worried about every bit of the surface being covered. So when I'm doing this, I'm using the flat part of my hand. I'm not taking my fingers and doing any type of design yet. Now I'm not too concerned about my edges over here quite yet because this is going to continue to roll and I really like how it's getting highs and lows here. I like that. It's already, they're already starting to kind of meld and do designs on their own. Now we're going to start coming in with our accents. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want these accents to go. And then I can actually do some small accents as well with my stick. This would be one of the design features that you would decide. Do you want a really big chunk or do you want to take that turquoise and kind of meld it very softly with your hands and have it feather out? I kind of like that look a little bit better, making sure now I want all my board to be covered. I'm going to take this and move it down with my fingers. You have to step away from the area that you're working and take a look at your whole piece. Because a lot of times you want to narrow yourself down and block your work area. Then when you step back, it looks like you have blocks of designs. And that's not what we're going for. We want a very cohesive pattern so that when you stand back, it, you get the full picture. So as I stand back, I'm seeing some of the, the turquoise really jumping out at me and I want to make that a little muter or a little more melded and softer. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this line and I'm going to soften it out just a little bit so that it's not quite so much a hard, a hard line. I'm not really going for veins. Okay. So I like this one. I'm going to widen this one up just a little bit. And the way I'm widening it out is all I'm doing is taking my hand and kind of melding that color out just a little bit. So I really like that a lot better. I see turquoise, dark brown, and turquoise. To me, this line right here looks just too hard. All right, so the reason I'm pointing on my hand is I want it to be very soft as I add this in. So I'm actually rubbing it in my fingers and I'm bringing it in very softly. I like that better. I don't have such a hard brown line. All right. Oh, wow. I really like this. See how this is a very, very subtle line. I really like that. We're going to torch it and then we're going to let it set up for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes because I want all of this stuff to fight and talk to each other and it's going to show me what direction I need to go next. All right, so now I'm going to torch it. Yeah, not too much though, because I no, don't want to. I just need to pop these bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> so on surface tension, when you see that, don't be scared. You can just go ahead and just put some epoxy right over the top. And that's it. Now I want to add some of that bling factor. So what I do is I start off the table and I start with quite a bit of material on my stick and then I start dragging it. 
Now, if I want it to stop, maybe not go all the way, I can run it and then pick it up. If I have a little drop, that's okay. But that way I don't have to run it through the length of the table. I want a vein right here, okay? I don't want it to go to either end. I want it right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and come out of the cup, but I'm gonna come out of the cup kind of hot, moving quick. So that even if I do get drips, they're not really big drips. And this is exactly what I wanted. I don't want this vein to go all the way to the edge. I wanted it to stop here, but I'm gonna make it stop very soft by rubbing my finger in it. I really like this flat area here, but I think we do need a little bit more bling. So I'm gonna just come in where I already went and just add it a little bit thicker. As this spreads out, it's gonna look really neat. Now, the last thing is our copper. Now, I've intentionally left it in the cup last because it's getting a little thicker. So, it's gonna give me a little bit more control. I wanna do it at an at a edge first instead of coming right here in the middle because I wanna see what it's gonna look like. So I can kinda play with it down here in this edge and if I don't like it, I can choose not to put it in there. But I really like how that metallic stays on top. Now I'm gonna play with it for just a second. There, that's it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, Kenny and I are gonna come back with some mica powder that's been mixed in 91% isopropyl alcohol. I have copper. I got he bronze. He has bronze, okay? So I'm gonna set my spray pattern where it's not a super fine mist because I don't want little fine particles. I want more kind of bigger drops. And I'm gonna kind of run it almost in a striation form, just ever so often. Ooh, yeah. When you first pour mica powders on a finish, those mica powders are suspended in your epoxy because your epoxy is fresh, it's very fluid, so the mica powders are able to sink down. If, and, and as they sink down over time, your pattern, which was once very distinct, will now become very soft and very flat. So if you like that melding and softening of the micas, that's a beautiful look. But if you wanna wake up your micas and give them a little bit more um, design, what you can do is you can come back with your hand. Let me find a piece that I wanna do that on. Maybe, let's see where it's really flattened out, like maybe right here, it's starting to flatten out. You could take your hand and you can wake up certain areas of your mica. And now you see how that design is coming back and I'm bringing those micas back up to the surface. And you'll notice I'm only touching every so often to wake up that mica powder. So one thing I really love to do is as the piece starts to set up, you're gonna get drips over the edges. Look at the beautiful colors that are already mixed. So I'm gonna kinda take those drips, and then I'm gonna come over here maybe where I think I need a little bit of design color, and I'm gonna actually put those drips in there. So now I'm really getting some cool looks. Okay, so I'm gonna try this ex little experiment. So all I'm doing now is adding layers of leftover epoxy. That's not something I would want all over the piece but it's really cool to have little accents like that. 
So guys, let me know in the comments below, would you have added that little bit of a dirty pour accent? Leave me a comment. Okay, we're gonna let this piece set up for about 30, 45 minutes, reevaluate and decide what avenue to go from there. Okay guys, I hope you like this video. I, I, I really hope that you like the color choices and I can't wait to show it to my customer. So what we'll do is tomorrow after this sets up, we will pour a flood coat, clear flood coat. And then I'm gonna come back the next day and I'm gonna put a ultimate top coat finish on it, which is gonna give me a very natural satin matte type finish. So if you like this video guys, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications and let me know what you think. And remember, check out our website, rk3designs.com for all of the supplies and color uh, recipe that we used in this project. And remember guys, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.